Good deal and good deal. Y'all ready for this? Wonderful. I'm coming. I'm coming. Who said that? You said on the timer. I hear you. I gotta find my list. I got it. Good morning this morning. Good morning this morning. If you'll take a seat, we'll go ahead and get started. We're glad to see you here this morning. We praise the Lord for you being here. My singers are up here telling me I'm running late this morning, which is not true, but uh, they told me let's get this thing moving. So we're going to do our best. We're glad to have you here. Today's a special day. It's Mother's Day, and we want to say thank you, and we praise the Lord for all of the mothers that are here today. And we've got a special gift for you when you leave this morning. We've been working on this gift for probably 12, 12 and a half years. Coming out of Persia, it's a special gift. Nobody, nobody's going to have one of these except for the mothers who are in Hasburg Community Church today. And it's a two-part gift. And when you leave today, if you're a mother, make sure there'll be children standing in each door and they've got two little special things for you. It's a special lotion that's only made once every 50 years. It's yours this morning. And then with it is a little pack of Kleenexes for you to dry those heavenly mother eyes out because you're celebrating with your family today and you're going to see some of the most beautiful children in the world. And so when you leave today, make sure you pick up your Mother's Day happy from Hattiesburg Community Church. For those of you who are visiting, we're glad to have you with us. There's visitor's cards on the back table if you don't mind. We'd love to have a record of your visit. We'd love to pray for you and encourage you in your journey of life, and we thank you so much for being here today. A few other things that are happening. If you're 55 and older, we call that the, the group that's special for every young in our church. Uh, on June the 28th, we're going to be having a 50s rock in the diner. And it's going to be over in the student building. Anita George is going to be cooking for us. We're going to have special entertainment. And uh, you're to dress in the 50s. So break out your old poodle skirts. And you guys get out your penny loafers. Put your pennies in them. And get your white T-shirt. Roll your cigarettes up in the arm. Never mind. Don't bring your cigarettes <laughs> with you. But we're going to have a wonderful time. We've got some good things happening this summer. You're going to see some buckets up front and little, little pails up here. Uh, we have two mission teams going out this summer, one to Guatemala, which is a medical mission team and a children's ministry team, the other to the Philippines. The Philippines is a, a crusade. Seven villages are coming together, and Brother Ray is going to be preaching a revival crusade for them. Then Brother, Brother Ray is going to be leading 80-plus church leaders, pastors and ministers. He's going to be doing a conference to train them and disciple them in church leadership. Then we're going to be doing children's ministries. Then we're going to be doing basketball ministry. And so we're going to be going to some parks, and we're going to get in those parks, and we're going to play basketball against the Filipinos. They say if you do that, you'll draw about four or 500 people, and then we're going to tell them about Jesus when we get them there. So we got some exciting things taking place, and these little pails are to help. And you've already done a great job. We're buying medicine uh, for our medical mission team. We're buying supplies for the pastor's conference, church leadership conference. We're buying food to bring people in so that they can stay and hear every session of that conference. And so if you want to drop something in these pails, you're welcome to today. And if you don't want to, we still love you, and we want you to know that. Pray for the mission teams. Pray for what's going to be happening this summer. And if you can, be a part of that. And we would love to see you involved in what we do to share the gospel of Christ around the world. Now, when you come to Mother's Day, it's a special time. And so we're going to start our service a little bit different today. We have Children's Dedication Day. And for all of you people that are holding all those precious cargoes in your arms, we're going to do that first this morning. Not that we don't think you can handle holding them for a while, but we're going to bring you up here first, and we're going to dedicate your children to the Lord. And so the Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, it says, Train up a child, your responsibility. Train up a child in the way that they should go, and when they are old, they will not turn from it. They will not depart from that. And so today, we're going to dedicate children unto the Lord. 
And we do this every year, sometimes two times, sometimes three times a year. We have seven coming this morning. We had one in our worship service last night, Mr. Asher Taylor. He was dedicated uh, at our worship services last night. And we want you to celebrate with these families. And you're going to see some beautiful children. And you're going to see some children we're going to pray for, we're going to encourage. We're going to ask God to not only dedicate them to the purpose and the will of God, to dedicate their parents to that and their homes to that. And so I want you to bow with me and have a word of prayer as we commit this holy time unto the Lord and we see God do great and wonderful things. Would you bow with me, please? Lord, as we come to the opening of this service, we realize, God, you've blessed us richly and abundantly. When we see a child, we see someone special. God, when we see a child in the hands of parents that love them and want to teach them the ways of God and share with them the love of God, we see something even greater. And so, God, we want to celebrate with these families today, and we thank you for allowing them to come. We thank you for all the family members that are here with them for Children's Dedication Day, and we pray that your anointed favor and blessings would be upon these families, and especially these children, and we commit them unto the ways of the Lord. Thank you, God, for your goodness. Thank you for allowing us to come and worship you today. We exalt you. We adore you. We praise you. We need you. We seek you. We love you, God. Fill this place, Lord, with the power of your spirit. Let the glory of the Lord come upon us, God, and let us truly worship you. And we seek you with all of our hearts today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we humbly pray. Amen. I'm going to ask Ray and Amanda to come up. They're going to help us as we call your name and your family comes forward. Uh, we're going to ask you. You're going to come up, and we have a gift that we want to give you. We're going to give you the word of God. And then we're going to give you a certificate of dedication for our children. And we'll line you all across the front right here. And then we're going to have a word of prayer for you as we dedicate your children unto the Lord. Our first one's coming, and we have seven that are coming this morning. Our first one is Sophia Blake Bullock. And so if you would be coming up here, this is Dalton. The parents are Dalton and Tara Bullock. And if you don't mind, I'm going to share with you some family members that they said would be here with us today as well. She has brothers and sisters, Mason and Avery. Her grandparents are Scott and Laura Bullock and Tanya Nance. Her great-grandfather is Henry Lawrence. She has Uncle Jason and Aunt Brittany, a great uncle and great aunt, Wally and Lauren Bullock, who will also be coming up here as well. And so today, as they come forward, would you welcome Sophia Blake Bullock and her family this morning. Y'all are doing great down there. Our next one coming, Ariel Nevaeh, Nevaeh Bullock. And uh, that was one of the great aunts and uncles that have mentioned. The parents are Wally and Lauren Bullock. And they come this morning and they have family members with them, Uncle Scott and Aunt Laurie, Aunt Brittany and Tara, Grandmother Emily Darby and Grandmother Beverly Buckley. And I just want to pause and say something here. When we see mothers and how special they are to children, uh, I'm, I'm on Facebook. I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook, but I saw something the other day on Facebook that was put on there by Lauren. Lauren has come to know Jesus Christ as her personal Lord and Savior. Wally has come to know Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. And I read Wally's journal, his biography of what had happened in his life, and he's been in more jails and rehabs and prisons than anybody that I know. And I want to tell you something. You're looking at the old man is gone and the new man has come. And the other day, <laughs> amen. The other day, Lauren put a post on Facebook and she said what I used to be. And she listed those things. And then she came to the good news, what I am today. And it's because of the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. We celebrate with them today. Number three, Mr. Cameron Ellis Kramer. His parents are Carrie and Kyle Kramer. Family members here are Kylie, his brothers and sisters, Kylie, Jackson, and Hayden, uh, Tim's and Donna as grandparents, and I saw Fran over here as well, Donna's sister. And I want to tell you, this, one, this is a sweet family. I had the privilege of visiting their house down in Purvis one time, and I felt like royalty. 
uh, in this home. This family loves each other. They love the Lord, and they are precious. Would you welcome the Kramers this morning and Mr. Cameron? Our next one this morning is Renly Monroe Nightingale, and she is the daughter of Copen and Katie Nightingale. Family members that are here today are Mark and Lynn Denny, her grandparents, Bobby Tant, her great-grandmother, and Tracy Nightingale, a grandparent as well. And I want to tell you something. This family loves the Lord, and I like what people say. Once again, I saw on Facebook, Katie went on there, and Katie put these words, I never knew how much you could love someone until a precious little girl came into our life. And we are so proud of y'all. Would you welcome this morning the Nightingales? Our next one is two children that are coming together, two sisters. The first one is Renly K. O'Rear, and her parents are Craig and Carrie Ann O'Rear. And their second child that's just been born is Olivia Rose O'Rear. Family members, a part of their family today are Ronnie and Donna Clinton, grandparents, Aunt Brandy and Uncle Joey. Craig, can you handle that over there? Yeah, okay. I don't blame her. If I was looking at you, I would be a little bit worried about coming up here myself. Hey, Renly, this is Brother Cliff. Come on up here. Yeah. Who knows? You may be eating at my house one day soon. Yeah, come on up here. And so also that are with them today are Bailey Walter's cousin, Caden and Kelsey Drum. And uh, this family is precious. They said, Brother Cliff, we have two children to dedicate. What a beautiful thing to see. And uh, these children are wonderful. The O'Rears are wonderful. We love them. Would you welcome them this morning and celebrate with them as well? Our last one coming this morning is Whit Jeffrey Palmer, and he is the son of Will and Josie Palmer. Would you be coming on up this way? He has a big brother named Ryder. He has Aunt Carly and Uncle Jimmy and his cousins Colt and Jace. He has Angie and Joey Palmer, which is known as Nana P and Papa Joey. And then he has Rita, which is an aunt here. And then he has Aunt Susie, Josie's sister, and also cousins Bailey Wally and Aunt Michelle. I tried to get this family, I've been trying for 42 years come this month to get someone to name a child after Brother Cliff. Nobody <laughs> has done that. And I worked on them pretty heavy. I said, look, I'll pray with you, I'll encourage you, I'll even contribute to the fund of your son. And they said, absolutely not. <laughs> and uh, hey, we love you guys. This family loves the Lord. They invite people to come and worship with them. They reach out to people. They serve. And listen, these children are beautiful. Now remember what the word of the Lord just said. I encourage you, each of you, to train up your children in the ways of the Lord. And when your children are old, they will not depart from that. And they'll remember you forever. And our message this morning is going to be about a heritage, a legacy that we leave from generation to generation to generation. And so many of these people that are gathered here, and I, I've been on mission trips with them, I've, I've done things with them, I've married a lot of these people, and I look at their families and I see the mothers that are here today of these mothers standing up here. And I see the joy of the Lord. And I see the, the carrying on of the lineage of the, the blessing of our children. And we're going to preach about that in just a little bit. But I want you to look at these families, and I want you to make a commitment when we bow to bless them today. I want you to make a commitment, whatever I can do, to bless them, to encourage them, to inspire them, to help them. I want to make a commitment to do that because I love these people who are standing before the Lord today. Would you bow with me once again for a word of prayer? Lord, as we come here we love these children. We love these moms and dads. We love these extended families, and we love you. And Lord, we dedicate them unto you, just as Hannah did in the Old Testament. Lord, if you'll give me a child, I will dedicate my child unto you. He's not my sole possession. He's God's. And so, Lord, we commit these children unto you. We pray that they will grow up in a home and an atmosphere where they will freely understand and hear the Holy Spirit calling them to become the children of God. 
And we pray blessings upon mom and dad. We pray blessings upon these homes. And Lord, we pray that you would anoint them with your favor. We pray you would anoint them with the power of your presence. We pray your blessings would be abundant. And we commit all of these who are standing before you today as a willful testimony that, Lord, we dedicate ourselves and our children unto the Lordship of Jesus Christ and unto the glory of your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, we humbly pray. Amen. Would you join with me in saying praise the Lord for these families? We love you guys. You did good, Henry. You did good. We love you guys. Hey, love you guys. And we're going to let you go be seated, and we praise the Lord for what God is doing in your life today. Well done, my families, this morning. Now, we want to have a, a, just a moment of you saying hello to the people around you. Then we've got a video for our mothers this morning. It's just a video of celebration of who our mothers are. But if you would, at this time, I'm going to ask you to stand with me. I'm going to ask you to look around. There's going to be some people around there that may want to speak to you and may want to hear from you. Let's love and encourage each other, mother. Let's welcome each other to the house of God today. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more, stronger than darkness, new every morn, our sins they are many, His mercy is more. Sing that with us again if you would, praise the Lord. from the beginning. What love could remember no wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all-knowing, he counts not as song. Thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord. So tender is calling us home. He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. Praise the Lord. 
is my firm foundation the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad I put my faith in Jesus cause he's never
house was built on you. And I'm safe with you. I'm going to make it through. Rain came, wind blew. My house was built on you. I'm safe. if you would remain standing just for a moment. All of our mothers, would you remain standing? And uh, we want to say something to you, and it's we owe you a great debt of gratitude. I miss my mama. She died when she was 94 years old. She was a special, special person and a great Christian influence in my life. And I think of her, and on Mother's Day, I think of all of you and what you've done for your children, what you've done for your families, what you've done for this society and the community in which we live. And so we want to say thank you and we love you, and we don't honor you enough, but today, may this be a special day in your life. Hattiesburg Community Church, would you join me as we say praise the Lord for these godly mothers this morning. Amen, and amen, and thank you, thank you, thank you. Brother Ed. Go ahead, Bethany. Yeah. 
Thank you, Miss Sherry. What a beautiful, beautiful song. If you have your Bible this morning, turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy. And we're going to begin reading in chapter 6, verse 1. And we're going to talk today about not only godly mothers and dedicated children, we're going to talk about the ways that God may lead us to help us to become what God wants us to be. And so he's going to say to the people of Israel, well, I'm going to share with you the truth that I want you to experience. I want you to impress this upon your children. And I want to do it in verse 2. He's going to say, I want it to be for you and for your children and for your children's children and for all of the world that are searching for the will and the purpose of God. And so we're going to look today and say, okay, God, how could you use us to carry out that legacy, that heritage of children from generation to generation? One of our songs just said, we're moving through from generation to generation. And here we are, and it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ and what his will is for our life and the things that he wants to do. And he wants us to keep his commands. He wants us to walk in his ways and follow his leadership. And he's calling on you to be a part of that procession of leadership, spiritual guidance, spiritual blessings, all the wonders and the things of God. So in your Bible, I'm going to ask you to read with me, and we're going to look at this scripture. And it's known as the Shema. And when you think of the Shema, you think of a truth. It's a declaration of truth of a couple of main things that all Israelis are told to remember all of your life. And so read with me in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Let's begin together in verse 1. These are the commands, the decrees, and the laws of the Lord your God that he directed me to teach you. Now, that's talking about all of us, the common people who are seeking and following the greatness of a holy God. So I've come before God and I'm saying, I, I, want you to t- I want you to understand this so that you can observe the laws of God in the land that which you're crossing the Jordan to possess. Now here it is, verse 2, so that you and your children and their children and after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all the decrees and the commands that I give you so that you may enjoy long life. How many of you want to enjoy your life? 
How many of you want to have not just eternal life, this greatest gift ever given by the grace and the mercy of God, but we also want to experience daily abundant life? That means we know how to relate to God and we know how to love one another and relate to one another. We know how to be what God wants us to be. And so here he says, hear, O Israel, listen to the word of God. And maybe God is calling us today to hear him. Hear, O Israel, as he speaks to each of us and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey just as the Lord, the God your fathers, promised you. He's talking about Israel. Now, just call a timeout. We'll come back to verse 4 in just a second. I told Joanne, and we, you know, we turned to that very, very special entity called Amazon. I said, I want you to get on Amazon, and I need you to get me something. And I want you to get me a sign for our yard. I usually don't put signs in my yard. And so I want you to get me a sign for our yard, and it says this, we stand with Israel. When you get that sign here, when you get that sign here, then me and you are going to go out there and we're going to get somebody to take our picture behind that sign and we're going to send it to Yehuda and Zippy Hecht. We're going to send it to uh, Reuven Nevo. We're going to send it to Adi Abraham. And we're going to send it to everybody that we know over the 30 years that we've been going to Israel that are our friends, that are living in danger of their existence this very day. And we're going to send that to them. And I haven't decided whether or not I'll get this political yet or not, but I may get you to come outside the front of the church one day and stand in front of Hattiesburg Community Church. We stand with Israel. And we're going to send that to everybody we can. That's not degrading anybody else. That's not saying anybody else doesn't deserve the the niceties and the goodness and the blessings of life, but that's saying that God is saying here, I want you to pass some things down and don't let it fall. Don't let your generation in the blessings and the teaching and the ways and the fear of an almighty God. Now, that's my free sermon. Let's go back to the regular one we're going to do today. Look at verse 4. Here it is. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit in your home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads and write them on the door frames of your homes and on your gates and so this is a declaration of God basically bearing down on two things number one I want you to know that there's unity in the family of God the Lord our God is one he's one God there's not, it's not polytheism. It's not many multiple gods. You pick the one that best suits your aura or your time and your season. No, he is the one true God. I want you to love him with all you've got. And then in Matthew 27, Jesus will say, and I will expound on the greatest commandment. And also I want you to love your neighbor as you love yourself because you have a love and a dedication and a passion unto God. Then love people in the same manner. And then he's going to go on with this imperative of this demand that he's given. And I need you to pass this along to the heritage of children. From a generation to a generation to a generation to a generation, time without end, that the Lord is what it's all about. And that's why we're here. We're here to worship him. We're here to honor him. We're here to seek him. We're here to to do his will and to, to be the people that he's called us to be. And there's probably room for every single one of us for improvement in our personal lives. And so with this in mind, God says, I've given you the Shema. Now carry this out and hand it down from generation to generation. And then over in Psalm 127, I want to share one more scripture that's kind of an important one for all of us. And it deals not just with mothers, but it deals with parenting. And so he says this, Unless the Lord builds the house, its labors labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. Unless the Lord's holy presence is with us, is on us, is through us, then everything we're doing basically is vain. He says, unless and it's in vain you rise early, you stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those who he loves. Now, you begin to trust God And you can go to bed and rest because God is faithful to take care of you even while you're sleeping. He not only provides for you, he protects you because he loves you. Now watch what he says about the heritage he's given us with children. Sons are a heritage from the Lord. 
Your children are reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are sons born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame. And when they contend with their enemies in the gate, we are a part of the great army of God. And I want to tell you something. We've won. And now we're doing a mop-up operation. And the reason everybody's trying to hurry up and bring God back is because they believe it's the end of the world. And one day the world will end. You don't know the time. I don't know the time. But Second Peter says, until it happens, you ought to be out concerned about people who don't know Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. He's not slack concerning slackness. He is allowing patience so that other people can come to know him as personal Lord and Savior. And their children can be dedicated at birth. And then they can be called by the Holy Spirit to be the children of God. And then they can grow up and their children can be dedicated. And they can be called to be a part of the family of God. And you are fighting a spiritual war for the souls of mankind. And we need to be proactive in that spiritual war. And so every day you've got an enemy. You've got someone who is anti-God, anti-Lord Jesus Christ, anti-you as a child of God, and we are here to claim. I love what my Sunday school teacher taught last night in his Sunday school class. Don't tell Robert said, I told you this. He said, man, when the Lord saved me, it was all in. I'm all in. And he said, "I, I, I still go. He said, we have a camp at Jordan River. And where our camp is, he said, that's some of the most ungodly people I've ever met in my life. And they're all my neighbors down there. And he said, so I'm down there. And he said, one lady is out walking, trying to, you know, with one of those things in her hand, a little bit wobbly. And she's walking along and she punches me. I'm walking beside her. And she said, hey, this lady is not like us. And he said, this lady's almost drunk as drunk can be. He said, why is she not like us? She's a pole dancer. And Robert wanted to say, well, what's the difference in a drunk and a pole dancer? And then he's got some friends he went to visit with the other day. He said he sat down at their picnic table and they came out and they know he's a Christian. They know he's in love with the Lord. And they brought out a beer and set it down in front of him. And Robert said to him, he said, you know, I'm not going to drink that beer. He said, well, but we, we've discovered something. When we find Christians and especially strong Christian leaders, we'll just put a beer in front of them. And usually they'll run for the hills. Robert said, I ain't going nowhere. I paid a lot of money for this camp. He said, I'm not running from you, and I'm not running from the people driving by. As a matter of fact, let's talk about the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's okay if he says you can drink. He didn't tell me I could drink. He put me under conviction to be controlled only by the Holy Spirit and not any other entity in my life. And Robert said they had a prayer meeting under there, and no more will they put a beer in front of him. Now, what that's saying is just be who you are. It's okay to be who you are. And let God work through your life. And so here, my Sunday school teacher last night is telling us, hey, if you're a child of God and you have a passion for the things of God and you're carrying on the heritage and handing it off to others and concerned about the spiritual well-being of other people, how many people have you led to the Lord? How many people are you drawing into the kingdom of God? How many people are you coming to know him so that when the time comes and we all stand before the Lord, Hopefully they won't be standing by you and say, hey, why did you not make a better effort to help me understand that God was trying to call me in life? You didn't say a word about that. And then one departs into the absence of the Lord Jesus Christ, into a place called an eternal hell, and the others enter into the joy of the Lord. Where do you stand in that area? And so we who have been given spiritual leadership, we have a commission from God. We have commands from God. We have a mandate from God. And that's what God wants his children to do. Well, when we think about it, you say, okay, Brother Cliff, what are those things? I want to share three things with you today. What am I supposed to do? Well, I, have you ever called somebody you're not supposed to call? You ever done that before? Now, I don't know what it is about this phone. It calls people all the time. It, it's on silent right now. It's in my pocket. And we were, I was teaching Sunday school, and I said, it wasn't on silent. I said, somebody's phone is ringing. My class said, it's yours. I pull it out. It's a name, Brown, on there from Mobile, Alabama. And so she answers. She says, hello. I said, ma'am, I'm sorry. I think I've called you by mistake. Well, who are you and where are you? Well, my name is Cliff Lazenby, and I'm at church. I'm at Hasburg Community Church in Hasburg, Mississippi. Oh, my goodness. 
And I said, what we did, we just decided the Lord needed to bless some people, and we wanted to tell you, God bless you this Sunday morning. She said, well, that's the sweetest thing. I didn't mean to call that lady. Now, watch this. I'm, I'm working in my house this week on Thursday, and I got a guy that I went to school with years ago in Lumpton named Chuck Key. His son was a relief pitcher for the University of Southern Mississippi. He holds the record for the most saves ever for Southern Miss baseball. And so Chuck calls me. He said, Cliff, how's things going? I said, wonderful. I said, what you up to, Chuck? I'm just calling you because you called me. I said, no, I didn't call you. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Now, watch what happens in the conversation. I said, well, if I am did, I didn't mean to. But evidently, I do that a lot. Well, can I tell you who else is calling a lot? God is calling a lot. And so here I've got him on the phone, and he says, Cliff, he said, are you still preaching? I said, well, I've been told for five years I'm retired, but they're, they're still expecting me to be up there. I said, me and Ray, we co-pastor. And so, yes, I'm still preaching. He said, good. I was talking to Mike Hurt, his wife Cheryl, me and my wife Sandy. We decided that we're coming up there to go to church. We want to hear you preach. I said, you don't believe I can, do you? And he said, no, I didn't say that. We want to come worship with you. I said, well, look, come on and worship. Listen, sometimes you don't intend to make a call, but the call turns into four people going to come to church and worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And so here God is calling you. And so when we grew up, Chuck made me think about when we were uh, young boys. He's a year older than me. We played. Our yard was a special place. Every boy's yard, every girl's yard. And so in the springtime, summertime, it was a baseball diamond. In the fall time, it was a football field. In the wintertime, we had a basketball goal, and we would wear the grass off the ground under the basketball goal. And my dad loved his grass. And so uh, all of these things take place as boys. And mothers, I remember what one mother said. They said, hey, what do you think about all these kids coming to your house and play and just tearing your grass to pieces? You know what the mother said? And I hope you would say the same thing. Hey, you can grow grass anytime you want to. But you can only grow little boys and little girls one opportunity in your life that's been entrusted to you. And so how do we help them hear the most important thing in life? How, how do we help them hear that, hey, God loves you. God wants to train you. God wants to teach you. God wants to help you be disciplined. God wants to nurture your soul because he cares so deeply about you. How do you do that? And so what God is teaching us is we must not miss the most important thing that's revealed in the Word of God, that we are to be stewards of the heritage of God, that we're supposed to be carrying on from generation to generation the story of the grace and the mercy and the goodness and the blessings and the power of an almighty God. And God is calling us. He's calling you today. You may not have heard the ring yet, but He's calling you today. I'm entrusting you to do the most important thing there is to do, and that is to feel the role of responsibility to share the goodness of God, and you can do that not only as a human being, but you do it especially as a parent of children. You do that especially as an influencer of people's lives. Okay, then what do I need to tell those people that God wants to influence through my life? I want you to tell them, and I want you to tell your children that you love them. How long has it been since you've told your children that you love them? And then when you told them, they kind of had to take a step back. What, what did you say? How long has it been since you said, hey, I, I want you to know something. I love you. Not because of what your kid can do or can't do. Not because of what your kid is involved in. But you love them because something is important in their life. What's that that's important in their life? And if we're not careful, we, we do everything the world says to do. And so our kids grow up and they don't have baseball diamonds in the yard and they don't wear the grass off anymore. And they're always ready to be somewhere else and go somewhere at all times. And, and we parents, if we're not careful, we'll send them. We send them to school to get educated. We send them to the movies to have amusement and entertainment in their life. Uh, we send them to ball fields to say, hey, I want you to learn to play as a part of a team. We send them to church and say, boy, I hope some of that religion wears off on you. We're not looking for religion. We're looking for the one and only relationship that only comes through Jesus Christ. And so they, we need to tell them, let me tell you something. It's not who you are or what you're doing. It's because of who put you on this earth and the purpose for which he put you on this earth. And he put you here to love you. You have a spiritual DNA that's your thumbprint. God, I was created by you. 
And it's not because of what I've done. I've done to deserve anything from you or earn anything from you. But God, you have chosen to create me how? You've chosen to create me in your image. And in your image, I will find my purpose and my significance in life. Listen, we made it a pretty good ways without one going out. That's pretty good. And so here the Lord says, what I want you to do, I want you to love your children. And you need to begin to spend a little time and exhaust every mean you can to tell your children how much you love them. When, when I thought of Lauren and Wally's testimony, and what a powerful testimony it is, I thought of the mother who exhausted everything she could to influence her child, and her child would not have anything to do with it until her mother said this to her. I want you to know something. There's nothing you're going to do that will ever stop me from loving you. That statement opened the heart of her daughter. And her daughter was going in the wrong direction. She was living a life of drugs. She was living in a life of sexual immorality. She was living in a life where she didn't know who she was or where she was half the time that she woke up in the morning. And that statement, you're not going to stop me from loving you, caught her attention. And a conversation started. And then the Holy Spirit began to work. And God drew that young lady out of a life apart from God to a life filled with God. And that's our role. That's who we are. We're responsible for that. And we stand around saying, boy, I hope somebody does something that makes some changes in this life. I can tell you one thing, do vote. Vote. I have more people that tell me, well, this is what I think. Well, me and you are diametrically opposed. I don't think like you think. And I want to voice my responsible voice on behalf of what would be best for a children, for me, my children, my grandchildren, my future generation. I want to be the voice that says, hey, I am accountable to God to let people know that God loves you. And he's not going to stop. You may not receive it. You may reject it. You may not want it. But you're not going to stop him from having a redemptive heart of love for people like Cliff Lazarus who need to be loved and who need to be forgiven in their life. And what a great and awesome God we have. And we see this love in action every day. And we pray, God, teach us. And another thing you parents need to learn, it wouldn't hurt you to begin to practice this, this word. And we don't like it. I'm just going to tell you, we don't like it. Listen, I want you to know, I forgive you. You need to say that to your children. And some of your children need to say that to your parents. And some brothers and sisters in the Lord need to learn the power of the word forgiveness. And we don't want to do it. But God says, if you love people, you'll forgive them. Peter, how many times? One. Perfect number from Hebrews 7. How about 70 times 7? Why? And you let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart and you will not walk around with hatred and enmity between you and a brother and sister in the Lord, but it happens all the time. It's not of God, I can tell you that. God teaches his people, here's what I want you to do. I want you to love your children. And I want you to love God with all your heart. And I want you to love others in the same manner. Number two, I want you to teach and train your children. And so he says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7, how do we do this? I want you to do it diligently. I want you to put your heart into it. I want to impress upon my children the most important thing in life is God. You know what I prayed for my children? I have two. I have a daughter and a son. And I prayed for them not that they would be not that they would be the top of everything in life. Not that they would be the greatest athlete or maybe the greatest intellectual person. I, I, I'm proud of what my children have done. And, you know, I'm going to tell you something. Because of my wife, my children are smart. Yeah. My daughter was valedictorian. I'm not up here bragging. I'm just telling you facts. And my son, believe it or not, was salutatorian. And he came to me and said, Dad, he said, I got I to write a speech. I said, well, write it. Your, your, your sister wrote hers as Valley told. Well, I don't, I don't even know where to begin. I said, you want me to help you? And he said, yeah. I wrote him a sermon. <laughs> he did that sermon, North Forest High School. I had people coming to him saying, man, I tell you what, that was encouraging. That was inspirational. And now I tell him years later, you can tell them your dad wrote that for you. <laughs> it was a sermon of who God is and who we need to be and the blessings he shares and the future that's before us. And how are we going to live out that future? Live it for the glory of God. And so God says, I want you to teach your children. I want you to train your children. And he goes even a little bit further. 
I want you to discipline your children. And so down in Proverbs, he talks about dis, uh, discipline and how we're to do it. He said, listen, I want you to impress these truths on your children so that they can learn to be disciplined themselves. And so we discipline our children so that they can become self-disciplined people. And so that's why God gives parents a role to help children discern the difference between right and wrong, the difference between good and bad, the difference between holy and sinful. I want you to discipline your children. And all of a sudden, we begin to see this discipline taking place, and it makes a difference in a child's life. And you can tell children, you can tell children in the world that have parents that love them enough to be honest and truthful with them, that they do the things that bring forth the blessings of God in their life. And I pray that you would accept that responsibility. I pray that you would accept that stewardship role. I pray that you would accept that guiding role. And not only your children, but other young people's life. And that's what God wants us to do. David Elkine wrote a book, and the title of his book was The Hurried Child. And he says, we're all guilty of trying to hurry our child through their rites of passage. We, we don't let them be children. We, we don't let them be adolescents. And so he says, the hurried child has some problems with permissiveness. We want to make our little children, our young teenagers, we want to make them like an adult, and they're not adults. They're not ready for that. And so he says, we hurry them through and said, we let them do the things of the world. We let them dress like an adult. We let them do things that adults do. Uh, we let them be permissive. We turn our backs, you know, when they're doing things wrong rather than us saying, hey, you, you might want to pray about that and think about that. And as a matter of fact, you're grounded. See, we don't do that anymore. We just stick our head in the sand, hope everything works out all right. How y'all doing over there? Hope everything goes good. And we do nothing. God calls his children to be proactive for the kingdom of God. And so my prayer for my children, not to be valedictorian or salutatorian or to be a good athlete or be something else. My prayer every day for my children and still is today. Lord, may my children and now my grandchildren, may they honor and glorify and please you in their lives. You know, that takes a lot of pressure off of me. To say, well, the world expects everybody to do this. No, I want my children to do what God wants them to do. I want them to love God. And I want them to love others. And I want them to become a part of the carrying on of the heritage and the blessings of God as it flows through their daily life. And so we're not only to love our children and teach and train and discipline our children, but the last one I share with you, we need to dedicate our children. Just what we did today. Lord, we're dedicating our children to do. Where'd that come from? came from 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 1, one of the greatest stories of Mother's Day would be Hannah. Hannah is married to a man named Elkanah. And Hannah also has a, a, a person who's married to him as well. Her name is Penaniah. And Penaniah had multiple children. And Hannah, Hannah was barren. She couldn't have children. And she goes to worship one day at the place of worship. And Eli is the priest. Now, Eli is going to be a priest that's going to receive Hannah's child to become a servant of God. And so he sees Hannah in the temple, and she is, she's pouring her heart out. She's got, she's got a troubled soul. Things are not going the way she hoped they would go in life. And so she's pouring her heart out for God, and Eli is sitting over there, and maybe she's over, if she was in this church, maybe she's over here by the baptistry. And she's kind of off to herself and not with a group. And so she's standing over here, and she's pleading to God. Lord, please, I would love to have a child. Lord, please. And she makes a vow in verse 11. Lord, if you were to give me a child, I would dedicate my child unto the Lord. I'll give my child to you, God. He's your possession. He, the sole possessor is God who created life. We are just the stewards and the responsible people to guide them through the journey of life. And so she, she's cried so much, she has no more tears to cry. And then all of a sudden, her mouth is still moving, but nobody can hear words coming from her mouth. And she's saying, Lord, please, Lord, please, Lord, please, 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 please. She just keeps on. And Eli comes to her and he says, young, young woman, is there something wrong with you? In the Bible, in 1 Samuel, he says, Are, have you been drinking? Oh, no, sir, I've not been drinking. I have a troubled soul. And I've wanted a child. 
And I made a promise to God, if he would give me a child, I would dedicate my child. I'll give my child to God, to serve God, to do the will of God, to fulfill the purposes of God. And then you know what Eli told her on down in the scripture? And it's beautiful what he said in verse 17. Eli answered, go in peace, my child. May the God of Israel grant you what you have asked. She said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. And then she went her way and ate something and her face was no longer downcast. She had hope that God heard her prayer. She had hope that it was affirmed by the priest Levi. Go in peace, my dear. And you know what's going to come? Samuel is going to come. Samuel is going to be one of the greatest prophets ever. He's going to be the last judge of Israel because after him, the Israelis will say, hey, we want a king, and here comes the first king, King Saul. And all of this coming as a man of God is beginning to transform the nation of Israel who was dedicated to the Lord before he was born by his mother, Hannah. Now, how many of us love our children that way? God, I want to dedicate my children to you. I thank you for giving me these children, but listen, they're really yours. They're the greatest gift God will ever give you is your children. And you're going to love them. You're not going to name them Cliff. You're going to name them what you want to name them. And you're going to make them who you want them to be by the things and the decisions you make on their behalf. And the first thing that I'm going to ask you to do this week is begin to pray, God, could you lead me into the intimacy of the holiness of God? to where everything that I have, I dedicate it unto you. I dedicate this to you, God. Now, that was kind of fun. You know, Ray was preaching about, you know, uh, dedicating things to the Lord, and he was teaching about we're just stewards. We're managers. We don't own anything. You know, and I, I've got a funeral to do Tuesday, and what you're going to see is at that funeral, you're going to see the person in the casket, and that's it. When you close the casket, you may have a couple of mementos in there, but you don't take your stuff with you. When you leave this earth, you're on your own. You came here, as, as uh, Job says, naked I came into this world, naked I'll leave this world, and blessed be the name of the Lord. But while I'm here, I'm to be a steward. And so God's calling us to steward. And so when Ray preached that the other night, I went out into my field, and I looked at my old Lexus convertible 2010 model. It used to have one dent in the bumper. And then at Merchants Field, where all the sinners live up there in Ellisville, I have a guy leave a note on my thing. He said, hey, I think I hit your car before I left. Yes, you did. There's pretty good dent in there. And I got two dents. And so uh, I said, man, I, I appreciate you calling me. He said, what do you think it'll cost to fix that? I said, thousands. It's going to be thousands. I can tell just looking at it. He said, you think it'll be that much? I said, I'll tell you what. I've already got one dent in there, and I'm fixing to have it fixed. Why don't I just combine them, and I'm going to pay for it myself, and why don't you just have a blessed day? you talking about a friend. I made me a friend that night. You save people money, you get friends in life. Well, God says this. He said, listen, you're just going to be a steward. And so when I was walking around in my field praying, I came by the old Lexus sitting on the driveway. I said, Lord, thank you for your car. It needs to be fixed. But thank you for letting me drive it. And every now and then I drive it with the top down. That's when I take the kids for a ride. And so I, I pull up when I open that top sometimes and all the little kids, it's like a transformer. Can I ride in that, Brother Cliff? Ask your mama. And they pile in. We'll ride around the church. And they're all like on a parade. <laughs> Isn't it good God lets us experience things like that? Aren't you proud of the truck he owns that he lets you drive? Aren't you proud of the house that you live in that he lets you live in? Aren't you proud of the body that's healthy today that he let you have and breathe the oxygen that he provided to go into your bloodstream, into your brain, and let you function in life? God, I want to dedicate things to you. I want them for your glory and for your praise, and I praise you, God, and I love you. I can't thank you enough for my blessings, and I'm absolutely in awe of the things that you do. And so the Lord says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to train up your child and the way that he should go. Go back to the Shema. I want you to teach these things to your children so that they may have a healthy respect and fear of the Lord and they may do the things and go in the direction that God wants them to go. And I want you who call yourselves Christians, I want you to open your heart totally unto God and let God fill your soul. And that's exactly what he wants to do. 
and then use you in whatever manner, in whatever way, he chooses to, to not only empower you, but to use you for the glory of his kingdom. Lord, what would it take for me to please you today? My pastor that I loved, that uh, mentored me right before I went into the ministry, he left First Baptist Church of Lumberton and went to First Baptist Church of Jackson, Tennessee. He called me one day and he said, look, I, I want you to come over here and see me. I went over there to see him. I said, what you, what you got on your mind? He said, look, I know the Lord is dealing with your heart and you got a friend that moved over here. His name was Ward Hurt. And he said, Ward has been saved and both of his sons have been saved and we're going to baptize them on this Sunday night. I want you to come over here and I want you to preach for their baptism. And I was thinking, you want me to preach at First Baptist Church Jackson, Alabama? A sinner like me? You want me to do that? And when I went over there, I sat down and talked with Rick, and he said, Cliff, he said, somebody has told me that you're surrendering to the ministry. I said, that is correct. I'm going to give my life to God. That's what he's called me to do, and I'm going to do it till the day I die. And he said, well, can I, can I tell you something? I need to tell you something. When you become the leader, spiritual leader, there, there's going to be a lot of things that happen in the world, and you're probably going to be the pastor of a church, and there will be a lot of things that happens in churches, but let me tell you something. People will forgive you if you make mistakes in life. They'll forgive you of many things, but here's what he said to me. I'll never forget this. But you know what they will not forgive you of? I said, what is that, Rick? They'll never forgive you for not loving them. We need to love people. And he said, the same thing goes with children. Your children will forgive you of a lot of mistakes you make. They'll never forgive you for not loving them. God today... God, today, as we celebrate the love that has come through the lives of our mothers, as we celebrate the love that's flowing toward all of these little children, and we're dedicating them to you, they belong to you, God. Help me to love. Help me to be willing to teach and to train and to discipline. Lord, help me to continually dedicate things to the holiness of the kingdom of God. You know what will happen in your life? There's peace that will flood your soul. There's a purpose and a will that will fill your life, and it will be all about God and not about the ways of the world. And before you know it, you're going to turn around. Me and Joanne, every morning we get up, read the Bible, we pray together. We, we're just tickled that this year I saw a guy at Forest General, and I was leaving Forest General. He said, Brother Cliff. So I walked back across the parking lot. It was him and his wife. He said, listen, are you still preaching? I said, yeah, I am. He said, well, aren't you getting old? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I am getting old. He said, well, you're, you're not as old as me. He said, me and my wife, we just retired. I said, well, how old are you? He said, well, she's 65 and I'm 66. And I, had to, I had to share him the bad news. I'll be 70 this year. That's a seven with a zero attached to it. We used to think people like that were old people. And you know what God is telling me? Hey, every day you live is a gift from God. Every moment you breathe air on this earth, you're in a position to make a difference for the glory of the kingdom of God. And my prayer for you when you leave here today is say, Lord, let me ponder some of those things. How is the generation... And the generation, and the generation going to play out according to me and my dedication and love for you. So you come over here and you see all these Gandhis sitting over here. And so you see, hey, Miss Kylie. So you see generation at the coffee pot. Oh, he's standing up there. I have to be careful. He listens when I don't know that he's listening. And so you see him and Miss Donna. And then you see Josh and Andrew. You see Carrie and Kyle. And then you see their children. And then before that, you're going to see those children having children. You're going to be back up here. We'll be on our walker. Them Gandys are still going. They're still here. Look at all that tribe of Melvins right there. They're still going. And listen, we're making a difference in their life. Terry, he, he remembered the song I told you about the other day. He said, come here, let me sing you a song. I've been singing it all week. Remember Honey in the Rock? I changed the words. Honey in the Rock. Money in the bank, going to town, going to fill my tank. I'm going to the mountains. That was last month. 
That, that, was, well, that was spring break of March. And Terry's over there singing that song to me this morning. God, what are you saying to me? I love you. I want to teach you. I want to train you. I want to help you become disciplined as a child of God. And I want you to dedicate yourself and everything you have to the glory of my kingdom. One day, we'll join with him and we'll hear voices as we've never heard before. Beautiful voices. And they'll be singing to the top of their lungs, worthy is the Lamb, praise God, who was slain to receive glory and honor and praise from who? From us. When? Today. When? This week. In this season of our life, whether you're about to be 70 or 7, wherever you are, the focus is the presence of God. Make sure you share these things from generation to generation to generation. And may the glory of the Lord be with you all. Would you bow with me for a word of prayer? Lord, we come to a time where we pause and we say thank you for our blessings. I see these families and I'm amazed, God. Not long ago, the parents that are standing up here were little boys and girls. And somebody has invested in their life. And now they have little boys and girls. And they're going to invest in their life. And we want to encourage them. We want to help them. We want to bless them. And God, we pray today that your spirit would come and you would move in a mighty way and you would call us to be who you've called us to be. Lord, I won't be like Samuel. Whatever your will is, that's what I want. Whatever your purpose is for your children, that's what I want. And you may be the last judge or you may be the first king, but God, we're here for you and for your kingdom and glory. May souls be saved. May lives be changed. May people be encouraged. May people be blessed. And may people lift up and praise and glorify the holy name of Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you with all of our heart. Teach us how to love and teach our children and teach us how to love other people in the world in which we live. And teach us how to make a difference. God, we love you. Let your love touch our life today, God. Meet us at our point of need. We celebrate with these families. We celebrate with these mothers. We celebrate with your holy presence. God, we pray for great and glorious things today and the days to come, time without end. We just want to say thank you, Lord, for letting us be a part of it. You are so wonderful, so good, so gracious, and so kind. Forgive me, Lord. Teach me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Thank you, Lord. May this day glorify and honor you in the mighty name of Jesus. We humbly pray. Amen.